It's gonna have to be a lifestyle swing. If you want to ask any questions, I would try and keep an eye on the Facebook one, but it's mainly for those that are in the Zoom. If you are also catching up on um, on replay, uh, I usually book these available bookings for these are usually available through Eventbrite um, they are free I usually do one a month on different topics so um, keep an eye out uh, on my Eventbrite account you can follow it um, and it will give you notifications every time I say that there's going to be a workshop or something like that coming up um, some of them are free there are also paid ones and there's also ones that are included with the membership so most of the the sessions that I do um, are part of the, the membership. So if you have a membership, you never need to book, you automatically get a reserve space um, and I just send you the actual link for it, um, which is always nice. Um, but if you're not in the membership, you either need to join um, or keep an eye on the event right um, to find that one out there. And so I'm gonna just put in the chat on both of these, um, the event right links um, it's like a week of workshops this week we had a members one last night um it <laughs> we finished at about half past nine um, and then it took my computer two hours <laughs> to, to finish buffering and saving the video to my computer so i left it doing that overnight and um, so if you're in the membership that will be going into the members video section possibly later today at the very latest by the end of the weekend um, because tomorrow is the first day of the organized entrepreneur retreat um, and I've just had my lettings agent phone to say that there are coming people coming to view the house on Monday and I'm like great I get back last thing on Sunday and I've got people viewing the house most people would say why do you care it's not your house but I care <laughs> I care I want people to not walk around this house and see the chaos it's currently in so yeah that's gonna be fun and um, so it might be that I have to now do some tidying of said house um, and then get the video up while I'm away but um, actually the internet signal is better at the retreat venue than my house so I'll probably upload faster there anyway um, and also while we're on retreat update the next date for the organized entrepreneur retreat will be released on Sunday um, before we leave the, the venue from this retreat I'm um, just getting the dates confirmed pretty sure it will be the week of the 22nd of September but waiting for that to be confirmed and we're also looking at a non-business retreat so one more about you for um, November or October so exciting things all happening all happening all the things and um, and a house move and this and that it's all, all always all go um, <laughs> Never a, dull, never a dull moment. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I have spotlighted myself. There we go. Awesome. Um, makes it easier for me to edit the video. So don't worry, I try and cut everyone else's faces out when I upload the videos for these. Um, so digital decluttering. Obviously, I love decluttering. Now that's, that, that's a given. But I have seen more and more of a positive impact with digital decluttering as the amount of digital clutter that we have has grown. Um, so I think first and foremost, we need to know what is digital clutter. Um, so for me, it's the exact same as normal clutter. And my definition, my personal definition of clutter is anything that doesn't serve you in its current state or location. So anything that doesn't serve you, whether it's in its current state or current location. Um, so that could be that I've got this lovely lamp on my desk. Now this lamp works beautifully. Um, I often need a lamp at my desk in the winter. I don't wanna put the main lights on. It serves me, it doesn't take care of any space and it's aesthetically pleasing. However, if the bulb in that lamp blew, suddenly it becomes clutter because it is not serving me in its current state. And I either need to ditch the lamp, we'd be silly to ditch a lamp because the bulb blew, but ditch the lamp or change the bulb. If I change the bulb, suddenly it's no longer clutter. In the same way that um, my daughter's toys in her room are not clutter. Particularly, she would say they are not clutter. They're not clutter in her room. If they're on the floor in my sitting room or in my office area, they are suddenly clutter. So they are not serving me in their current location, which makes them clutter. Now, sometimes the current location is just not in your life. <laughs> And therefore the, that clutter is, it's not even going to another room, it's going somewhere else. But it's, I think it's very important to note that sometimes 
it's not about getting rid of the thing it's about the thing if the thing was somewhere else or in a different state it would no longer be clutter if it was actually serving a purpose and had a use um or was in the right um switch was changed or a fuse was changed suddenly it's no longer clutter um and i think that's a big one of where um one man's trash is another man's treasure as well someone who loves upcycling and things um always got loads of things and i think the same applies with digital clutter um, we are very quick to upgrade our devices when we run out of memory because it is a lot simpler than if we need to upgrade our physical space so if we suddenly run out of space to store our clothes the majority of us aren't going to move house just to have bigger wardrobes occasionally, but it's a lot more hassle, stamp duty, just finding someone to buy at the moment, getting a mortgage, a lot more hassle than going, oh, my laptop's full. I'll either buy an external hard drive or I'll buy an app, a laptop with bigger storage capacity. Same with our phones. Easy one to do with our phone because every year or two years we get an email from our service provider saying, you're due a free upgrade. It's not free not free it's built into the contract somehow we're paying for it somehow um but we're like oh yeah i'm like full of photos i might as well upgrade it and um, it's a lot easier to just keep increasing the size of our space with digital stuff than it is to actually deal with the problem um, and one of the things we need to remember because obviously now we've got clouds and we just send it off into the cloud it's fine no, it's not even taking up space on my device anymore. It's off in the cloud. It's fine. Um, but the cloud has a carbon footprint. And for me, it's very much not aligned with my, <laughs> with my choices in life, um, with my core, with my soul. Um, I don't want to be creating a carbon footprint, a bigger carbon footprint than I need to, just because I don't want to sort out what's on my cloud. And um, so I am very careful with how much I put onto the cloud onto my google drive all those kind of things i want to be making sure that i'm limiting as much as possible and um, and whether we've got it in a cloud whether we've got the physical capacity on our devices to store the digital cluster that we've got we've also got to think of the additional impact that it could be having to us it's distracting we can't find what we need quickly enough we're sending the wrong version we're sending a contract that was like four versions out of date because our systems aren't organized every time we open our computer up our desktop is like covered in like 400 different things every time we pick our phone up we've got 27 apps that we're like i've never used these why are they on there that is all still digital clutter and um, so it could be an app, it could be a piece of software, it could be photos, it could be documents, it could be videos, it could be anything that is in our digital space. Um, I also hate having open, half watched things on my Netflix. For me, when I go onto Netflix and I'm go through the what we're currently watching, um, or maybe we finish a series and we sort of scroll back to see if there's anything else we'd like to follow on. I hate when there's stuff in there that I've either like watched and gone, this is rubbish, I'm never gonna finish watching it. So every now and again, I'll go into my, sign into my Netflix. I find it easier to do on the computer, this than the TV, go into my Netflix um, and remove the things that I'm never gonna watch. Um, and the other benefit of doing bits like that is that then Netflix is gonna recommend Becca things to me. So if I've gone in, obviously different TV, Netflix isn't the only one out there, but you can go in and I'll remove from watch, watch later list. This is watch later and continue watching or like your wish list. I'll remove it from my continue watching list. And it usually will say something along the lines of, oh, did you not like this? Or what, why, why are you deleting it? I'll say, no, I didn't like it. Yes, I did like it, but I'm just tidying up. That is, it, it has an option that says something I didn't, I did like, but I'm just tidying up. And it means that the algorithm can still recommend things to you that you will like. But if you haven't liked something, take it off there. So it doesn't keep recommending similar things to you. Um, that for me is also digital clutter because let's be honest, how much time do we waste when we sit down to try and pick something to watch? In itself, that's a, suddenly we've saved a week's worth within the next month at least. Um, and same when we're going into our computer to look for things. I mean, I've been really lucky to have quite a lot of press recently um, and I've got folders that have got my bios in, um, that have got my headshot photos in, that have got a few like practical in action photos. And um, I had some of my upcycle furniture featured and I knew where those were because I've got them got that decluttered and organized. I've got, I haven't got 200 pictures of the same thing. I've got the two or three of the ones that I really like. Um, and I make sure that I keep on top of those because I know in the long run, it's gonna save me a hell of a lot of time. Um, 
and particularly with like the PR things, the deadlines are often very quick. So they usually will be talking to a couple of people at the same time and it's whoever sends it back first because some people go to them, they need to have a backup plan. And um, so those kind of things that are going to save you time and if you happen to run a business as well um, could be the make or break. I'm very quick to get back to journalists so they know that if they need, they've got a short deadline, then come to me um, for quick comments and photos and I've always got those, those ready and raring to go. Um, but in the same way, if someone turned around to me and said, oh, I saw your digital decluttering workshop, it was brilliant, um, which obviously it is. Um, I'd love you to come and, and teach it for so-and-so. Um, and we've just had a cancellation. It's in three hours. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm free in three hours. And I know exactly where my notes are for that. So that's great. Um, I can find all those kind of bits and pieces. Same with suddenly needing a photo to oh, you're selling a dress that you haven't worn for 10 years and no chance of fitting in anymore. I know if I've got a photo of it, where it will be to save me having to find a friend that does fit it for me to take a picture of it on someone. I know where I can go and find that. Um, so just a few examples. There's always something we're looking for. And unfortunately, the search feature is not as reliable as we'd like it to be in lots of cases. Um, we didn't label it right. Years later, we would think of it differently. So how, how you would choose to label something now might be very different to how you used to choose to label things. Um, and therefore you're searching based on your brain now. And actually it's, um, it's based on your brain from 10 years ago. So we wanna make sure we are, we are keeping up to date with these. Um, with digital decluttering, uh, for me, it's the same five-step process that I use for physical clutter. It doesn't matter for me whether it's physical or whether it is in person, even mental. Um, I will go through the same basic process um, with categorize, minimize, organize, systemize and glamorize. Now, glamorize is a little bit less exciting with digital um, because we're not getting to buy really pretty storage containers for things. We're labeling folders and color coordinating stuff a um, little bit, but it's still there. Still counts. Still helps. Um, to categorize, uh, there's two sides to this with digital um, in the same way that you would need to decide what each room in your house is going to have in it. So this is the kitchen and this is the living room. And what does that mean to you? Um, so take the living room, for example, we would decide that the living room. So our living room at the moment, I'll use it as an example, has also got my office space in because my old office we needed as a packing room and a sorting room. Um, we have a small amount of kids toys in here, but we didn't want very much and we didn't want anything she could get out easily. So she's got a Lego box, it's tricky to open, she needs help. She gets one toy, I get a little office space. That for me is the category of our living room and what do we want to have in that category? Same thing would be with your phone. So I have two phones. I don't know where my other one is, that's always good. Um, there it is. <laughs> I'm not a drug dealer, I am work phone, work phone and personal phone. Um, and I have different categories for what I'll put on each. I am not gonna put Tetris on this phone. I'm not gonna put, um, can't think of any other app apart from Tetris right now. I'm not gonna put Tetris on this phone because it's my work phone. It's where I want to only have work things. Um, it's quite old because there's no point in buying a new phone when I already had this one. Um, so I wanted to limit the apps on there. So I'm not gonna put anything on there that's not very much specifically for work. Um, whereas my personal phone, um, I'm not gonna lie, I do still, because I've only just, just about six months of having two phones, I'm still, um, but this one has a lot less work things on. So if I've got um, graphics or photos or anything on my computer that I need to upload to one of my social medias and I'm gonna do it while I'm out and about, or if I know I'm taking pictures that will specifically be for work, I will take them on this phone as well as much as possible. So I'm reducing the clutter that's on this phone because um, I won't necessarily have those ones saved onto here. Um, I would just save them onto there. And that is about deciding like work phone categories for that, personal phone categories for that. It could be, and I actually did meet someone the other day that does this. Um, I'm not in this magical land yet, but it would be nice of not having my work email on my phone. Maybe you're like, I'm only going to deal with work emails on my laptop. Usually easier when you don't work for someone else, uh, when you do work for someone else even, rather than when you work for yourself, because part of the joy of work for yourself is being able to sit in the car park and <laughs> work on your phone, or sit somewhere else that's got air con. Um, but they didn't have, they don't have work email. They've categorised, this isn't a place they want to deal with work email, but their computer is. So they're going to set their category and be like, yes, on my, on my computer, I will have access to my work email. 
um, on my work computer, I might not have access to my personal. I might block Facebook. Um, there might be things like that. It's deciding what, what each of those digital spaces is going to be used for and how it's going to serve you. Uh, so I have two external hard drives, another digital space. And um, one of them is very much specifically my daughter's. So it's all the things I want to be able to just pass that hard drive over to her one day and be like, here's all your digital memories. We take pictures of our artwork that goes on there, photos, photos of the Christmas cards go on there, um, all those kind of bits. It's very much that is Felicity's hard drive and that's what it does. Um, and that's categorizing that space as that hard drive. Um, I've then got another one, which half of it is used for my photos to make sure my photos are saved in one place. I do back that up to the cloud, but I'm very careful to make sure I've got a limited number as possible. Um, but then I also put old work stuff on there. So it has two sections on that hard drive. It's like an old work one as well. So old work things. And again, I'll go back through it every now and again and just get rid of some of the really old stuff that is I'm never going to touch again. Um, it's outdated or whatever, but it's about picking the categories that you're going to have on each device. And then within each device, how do you want to break those down? So uh, a simple example is your phone. Um, some people will have sheets and sheets, you know, when you go on and you swipe through app after app after app, they would rather have the sheets spread out. They put their favorite ones and they work their way back to their less favorite ones. Another cool way is to group it by color. So you can have a page that's like all the red apps, all the blue apps, all the purple apps. Because if you think Facebook, you automatically see blue. I think Twitter, you see the little blue birds. So those ones you'd put together. Um, whereas if you wanted Pinterest, you might go to the red page. Um, seeing people do them alphabetically. Um, I personally, for me, very personal choice, I prefer to have as few pages as possible and have folders. So I group mine in folders. So on my home screen, say on my personal one, um, I've got a finance, um, I've got a, I suddenly panicked that I was on mute. I'm not on mute, am I now? I'm not, good. excellent. <laughs> I'm sure someone would have said something by now if I'd been on mute. Um, so I've got like a finance one that's got all the banking apps in. I've got a work one. Um, I've got a fitness one that I'm not using as much at the moment. Um, entertainment one, it's got like Audible and Kindle and YouTube in there. And um, socials, all my social medias that I don't use as often. So I have Facebook and Instagram on my main page because I use those a lot with work. Um, but my all the other ones are in the socials app. And I have a utilities one, which is basically everything that doesn't fit into the other categories. And then a few of the ones that I'm constantly in and out of all the day. So Google Calendar, Trello, and um, I have those as separate ones. And um, then the second page, I kind of use as a, I guess a dumping ground would be the best description. It's got apps that maybe I'm trying out, apps that I'm only use for a short time. So at the moment, there's actually three rows. That's quite full for me. Um, but there's, um, oh, keeps thinking I want to delete it. But those are ones that I'm going to try short term, see if I use them a lot. And then if I am, then I'll make sure that they've got a space properly on my home screen. That's how I categorize within my phone. Um, and that's obviously just my phone, for example. Um, another space would be your email. So what's your opening up your email? That's a category in itself. Do you need to have a separate email address for personal and a separate email address for work? That would be deciding on the categories. Um, and then what folders do you want to break that email account down into? Um, so I have a personal and I have a professional email. And there are a couple of others that I've like had to set up to log in or have duplicate accounts. And last night, like when we were doing the Google Calendar workshop, um, I have a Google Calendar email that I literally just use for teaching Google Calendar because I don't want anything else on it. It means I can delete and play around with the calendar and it's not mucking up my calendar. Um, so I'm not saying there aren't other emails, but they all have a very specific purpose. But the two I actually use for emails are one personal and one professional. Um, even though I have another business, I make it come through to my Lifestyle Coach UK one. Um, and then I have break separate categories within that. So it's thinking about what categories do you need? So if we take personal, for example, um, within personal, I've got my inbox. Um, now, a lot of people then leave it there. They think that an email is either there in your inbox or it's deleted, that those are your two options. And it's just not the case. And um, what we want to do is have multiple sort of archive folders um, and transition folders so that we're keeping the flow going with that inbox we don't want our inbox to become overwhelming with too many things um, and we'll talk about more this more bit with some of the other sections as well so what categories 
do you need in your email? Is it that you need, uh, so I've got a folder for my daughter, I've got a folder for the house we're moving to, because there's always loads of emails when you're moving about that. I've got a folder for the home I'm currently in. Um, and when we move, that will all merge. Those two will merge into one until we want to move again, which hopefully will never happen. I never want to move again. Um, I, said, I said that two years ago when we moved here. Um, I've got a pending folder. So instead of just leaving things that are currently pending in my inbox, if I'm waiting for someone to reply um, or I'm waiting for something to happen before I need to go back to it, I go to there. Um, if I've got a purchased one, so if I purchase something, I will put the invoices and all the delivery notes and everything like that into the purchase folder. And every now and again, I will go through that folder and be like, yes, these are arrived. I'm definitely keeping them or, oh, wait, this is a warranty for this item, in which case I will download that email, save it as a PDF and keep that somewhere else. Um, it's not letting it stagnate. In the same way I talk about to-do lists, we never want our to-do list to stagnate, particularly like our, our weekly one. Um, it should very much keep flowing. Otherwise, it's not a to-do. If it's stagnated, it's not a to-do. To-dos flow, they keep moving through, we get things done and we move on to the next thing. Or they should be on a long-term to-do list, which is still flowing, but much slower, much slower flow. But weekly, should have a nice, a nice current to it. Um, and our inbox should be the same. Our main inbox folder should have that same flow. Um, and occasionally, we're all going to have one times that it builds up. Um, it's rare I let mine build up too much these days because I've got, I tend to open email, deal with, and deal with it might mean putting it into another folder, might mean sort of marking it as unread again because I'm not going to deal with it right now, but it's rare I don't deal with every email that comes in. I will touch at least digitally digitally touch it check in with it no this is something that needs more time i'm going to allocate some time for tomorrow to deal with it uh no this is just a, a note to self one move it around like that but keeping that flow going and but decide on the categories that you need within your email that you need within your folders a work email probably one a good one to have as invoices and um, tickets or links for attendance so if i sign up for a workshop like you did today um, I get all the you know, get all the lovely emails from Eventbrite those would go into my attendance ticket folder because then I know oh I've got that workshop starting in 10 minutes I know which folder to go into and I can find it pretty quickly so categories it's kind of um more of a planning stage more of a planning stage to your decluttering process doing those categories but the other thing I will also find is that if you were doing it with physical stuff, that would be the phase where you are putting like to like together. Um, and in the same way as you're going through each of your digital spaces and deciding how they're going to serve you and what categories are going to be in those spaces, you will probably come across things that you can just get rid of during that process. So whether it's digital or physical, while you categorize, you will find things that can go. Um, it's just magical. But because you're not focusing on things going, it doesn't feel too overwhelming. Um, once you've got them all together um, so you could then start moving you'd be like right this is the folder that's going to be my photo so I'll move all my photos into it then I'll open my photo folder right what are going to be the categories that I'm going to break this down in here to so I'm going to have travel and I'm going to have uh, one for Christmas photos and one for big family events and I'm going to have one for work photos and one for pre-baby photos or whatever it is you have all your break categories and then you can start moving your photos into those categories during that process, you've now put all your travel pictures together um, and you realize actually you're gonna break these down by country and you've got 47 pictures of the same mountain from one trip. This, this one I definitely speak from experience when I went through my Romania photos from when I was 17 um, and I was like, oh, I have lots of pictures of the same thing and I automatically minimized them down even though I hadn't in theory moved on to the minimize section um, and I find the natural sort of decluttering process that happens as we categorize feels a lot less overwhelming than when we very much go in and be like, right, time to minimize, time to now I've got to delete things. Um, you will already found that you've cut down during that categorize process. So minimize is obviously reducing things. Um, and the same with physical stuff, two-step process. We have to turn off the tap and we have to clear up the flood. Um, so clearing up the flood is sorting out the items that you've already got. Um, so that's clearing up the mess that our things have got into, that are all the photos, all the files, the 4,000 emails that we haven't actually ever opened, um, all those kind of things. That would be your clearing up the flood. 
turning off the tap is going to be understanding where the things came from in the first place and limiting how much comes in again. So the what is coming in is only what you need and what you want to be coming in. Um, so for example, very simple example, emails, unsubscribing. That is a very nice, clear, straightforward way of turning off the tap. Um, you can use the amazing search feature in emails. Um, you could search the word unsubscribe straight away. It'll bring up all the emails that have the word unsubscribe in and you can just unsubscribe from any you don't want. Um, what I would recommend doing as you unsubscribe is just copy the, the email address of that one or the business name, save the business name, hit unsubscribe, delete that email and then search, use the search feature to look up all other emails from that company. Um, so I'm going to use Flowers for Us. I think it's a fake company. Flowers for Us is my example. So Flowers for Us, I subscribed years ago. Actually don't want to order from them anymore. Just not really, not my jam. Um, so I've searched unsubscribe and Flowers for Us has popped up. Okay, so unsubscribe from Flowers for Us. I then put into my search box Flowers for Us and email will show me all the, all the emails that I've had from them. So all my um, flowers for us emails. I can then highlight them all because they're all. I feel like I'm back. Sorry for that. My whole internet has just disappeared. So I am. I've set up my hotspot on my phone, and hopefully that will uh, keep working. And um, I'm just going to double check that this is still right. I thought it was just my Facebook connection that dropped out. Um, luckily I spotted before I said too much. <laughs> Always, always annoying when you say you've said loads and like oh no I don't remember where it cut off um let me just hit the spotlight on here let me set that one up and I'm just going to double check it seems to say it's still live on Facebook so that's helpful um just gonna ah I'm just gonna hope for the best and hope it's still live it's fine um oops where did I get to? Hang <laughs> on. Okay. not letting me spotlight. Cool. Hopefully that's right. Wonderful. Right. Flowers for us, that's where we were. So I've uh, I've searched unsubscribe, flowers for us has come up, and I've hit unsubscribe, and then I have searched flowers for us in my search box and during that process it's brought up all the many 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 emails because they send me daily emails weekly emails this imaginary company and um, sent me all the emails that they've sent me for the last five years or whatever however long since I've been subscribed um, and then I can hit control a which will highlight all of them and I can just hit delete again i've had two years of this but it's never actually done it in a workshop we've been very lucky um but it cuts out all the time our internet two years of arguing with vodafone for some money back um they gave us a couple of free months and i'm like no that's not enough so i'm still arguing with them anyway right flowers for you so we've bought up all the flowers for you um emails we've hit control a and we can delete the whole lot um so as you go through and delete things that you're unsubscribing from, you're turning off the tap, you are also doing a bit of clearing up the flood. So you can do a little bit simultaneously. Um, so it could be that you are going to lessen the flow, probably the best terminology, um, with photos that come in. We go out for the day, we take loads and loads of photos, make it a little bit of a thing that then in the evening or a couple of days later, you'll just go through and see and, and just save your favorites and make sure you've deleted any excess ones. And um, I usually do that once a month. I'm not a huge photo taker, which is often problematic because I need them for social media. Um, but I will go through once a month. It's actually scheduled in my Google calendar as a monthly repeating event, one evening a week, um, one evening a week, one evening a month where it says declutter phone photos. And I'll just go through and take out any duplicates and um, email myself a few any that I want to put onto my computer to save save over to my hard drive um, or airdrop if there's quite a few things that on there 
um, and I'll have that as part of my systemize, which we'll refer to in a minute. Um, but I am minimizing, instead of just sending them all over to the cloud or all over to my laptop, I'm minimizing, I'm reducing the flow of how much is gonna be coming across. Um, so I might not turn the tap off completely. I still want some photos to come into my life, but I definitely don't need as many as I've probably taken in the first place. Might as well just keep the few best ones or like with small people or like animals, they don't always do what you want them to do in the picture. And um, so you might you end up taking like 400 to get one where things look okay. Um, and then you can go back and delete the rest. So make sure you're doing that. There are apps and things that you can get. I'm not completely confident with any of them yet. Like I, not that I think they're bad. I just haven't used any one app enough to officially recommend, but there are apps that look for duplicates. So you can have upload the app, it'll sort through your photos and group the duplicates together so that you can then delete from the duplicate photos from the photos that all look very similar. And um, you can pick which one you like um, the most. So there are apps out there, um, but I'm not I'm not prepared to recommend a specific one just yet. Um, I'm sure it will be at some point. Working through the minimize process with digital is it's kind of got a good side and a bad side because with digital it's not like you've emptied out your whole wardrobe and like spread it all out over your room. And then you kind of like, you have to deal with it. So you've got somewhere to sleep. Um, you can take it much slower. You can do little bits at a time. And um, obviously, great, dedicate a whole week and do all your digital cluttering. Wonderful. If you've got that to do, you're very lucky, feel very blessed. Um, but it doesn't matter if you're just doing those little bits at a time. Um, it's not going to be hugely problematic and it's like move all your photos into a folder called photos that's all you can do right now that's still going to be beneficial um, and if you then go in and start reducing them down categorizing them down more and minimizing them down more that's going to be great too um but it just harks back to why i have categorized always as my first step um, because it helps to have that sort of like instant win straight away all your pictures are together you only need to go to the photos folder instead of everywhere where you randomly had them at least they're now in that one place um but also that process will help you turn off that tap because you might need to turn off the tap of what goes onto this device but actually those same things they're fine going to your computer you just didn't want them on your phone as well and now you've decided i don't want those things on my phone i don't want that app or that bit of software on my phone straight away you've turned the tap off for an element of your phone just by being like, well, that's not a category that belongs on there. Um, then we get into organizing. Yay, we love organizing. Um, what arrangement makes sense most for you? Now that will vary from device to device. It will vary from phases of your life as well as we grow and evolve as these wonderful human beings. And um, one of the simple examples of this is like, how are you gonna title your folders? So for me, I would likely have a holiday folder instead of a travel folder. I don't know why. Even when I traveled, I would still be like, it's a holiday. <laughs> My life's a holiday. Um, but that would be me. Like if I was going to look for pictures of when I was in Romania, even though I lived there for five months, and that's not really a holiday, I was living and working there, I would still go to a holiday folder to look for the photos of that. Um, would you label your work folder work or would you label it your business name um, or your company name or your job role? Um, like what would you look for? Would you prefer work or professional, your professional life folder? Um, do you prefer having a folder with your name on for your personal stuff? So is it going to be folder Michelle or is it going to be folder personal? That happens to be on Michelle's computer. Um, it's just thinking about what, what would you search if you went looking for it? And this, again, funnily enough, applies to physical stuff too. I would say to my partner when I've done and rearranged something else, or more so each time we move and I reset things um, for a new area. And I'm like, just think, where would you logically look for this item? Where would this item logically be? And nine times out of 10, that is probably where I've put it. And um, like, not where historically that item should be kept, but where would I logically? So like we do the ironing in the utility room at the moment. So the ironing and the ironing board are in the utility room. However, if I had, uh, if I liked ironing on my landing, 
What a lovely landing, but I don't iron there. If I liked ironing on my landing, I would try and keep my ironing board and my iron as close to that spot as possible, even though most people are like, why iron before it goes in the utility room? Not if you don't iron in the utility room. Very simplistic example, <laughs> but um, you know what I mean. Um, so if you do lots of your graphics, you do your graphic creation, on Canva or whatever. If you do most of that on your iPad, then it's probably good to have a category on your iPad and that has the photos and things that you're gonna to need to import to do those Canva things. In the same way, where are you gonna use it? And um, that helps you decide um, how you would label it and where you would look for it. Um, so thinking about, yeah, there's names to those folders, what would you call it? Um, so for a long time, I've, I've, I've matured slightly now. My random folder was always called Bob. I was called Bob. Um, so if I needed, if I knew it was like a random thing that I'm like, I had no idea where I'd put this on my computer, I would search, I would go in my Bob folder. It was always in there. If I didn't know what to name a document, I'd name it Bob. It'd be Bob one, Bob two. So if I'm like, I have no idea what I would have called this, chances are I should have searched for Bob. Um, I'm pretty good at labeling things now um, and I've now matured and have a folder called random um, only because I had a VA for a while and, and she got very confused about what, why I had folders called Bob um, but for me at the time I knew if I was looking for random I wouldn't search random I'd search Bob um, <laughs> true story slightly crazy aren't I um, but we already knew that so yeah, think think about what how you would enable it, how you would organise it. Where would you look first? Um, the other one I quite like with digital is colour. Um, like I said, with the with the apps on the phone, I've seen people do that, and um, where they've grouped the certain colour apps together, so they have a red page and a green page and a yellow page, and they put the apps onto there. Um, it just makes it a little easier to flick through. You don't have to read any words. You can literally just look at the colour. Obviously, it doesn't work if you're colour blind, um, but that that's another example of different ways that you can choose to organize them and um, and also with how small the categories are would come down to organizing so you might have set your categories at the beginning but now you're into more organizing them in into a deeper way are you going to label all your photos would you prefer to have smaller folders but you're not going to bother labeling each individual image and um, or you prefer to have a broader folder so all your travel photos are going to be in one folder but you're actually going to label each folder each folder each photo with what it is with what holiday and date it was um you're going to have a dated folder or you're going to date the document like what would you prefer to do um, what makes sense better for you or if it's for business for its work what makes sense for work what fits with You've got colleagues and co-workers your partner using whatever it is who's going to be using the space most of the time it's you so what works best for you there's your answer there's no right or wrong way it's about finding what works for you uh, some people like as much stuff out as possible they want open shelves in their house like in a physical sense and um, maybe you're an open shelf person in which case what's going to be your digital version of an open shelf or do you prefer things covered up like smaller you're gonna have like four open your folders documents on your computer you only want to see four folders I think I have like four or five and that's it and then I go into each one I want the first step to be easy because I don't want to get distracted by all the other shiny things I want to go straight in and be like today is a work now clicking on my work folder or today is a felicity day I'm clicking on my felicity folder for example and um, it's what works best for you um then we move on to systemize. So we talked a bit about, uh, well, a lot about systemize in um, the workshop last night about our Google Calendar, um, because it is a tool. It's a tool, whether it's Google Calendar, whether it's a uh, your phone, your app, your, an app on something, your iPad, your laptop, it's a tool. And it will only ever be as good as the systems you have in place to use it. Um, so things like um, having one evening a month where I sort out some, my phone photos. If you don't take many photos at all, like I have to, I take photos for work and videos for reels and stuff and little one loves having a picture taken, that kind of stuff. Um, it's worth me having a once a month. If I did loads more than that, say I was a full-time content creator, having 20 minutes every day would probably be beneficial or once a week 
for me once a month my system is once a month um so with my emails i will do like a big deeper clear out again once a month if you are constantly bombarded by emails day in day out it might be more beneficial for you to be like right 15 minutes a day i'm going to sign log off everything 15 minutes before the end of day and i'm going to spend 15 minutes having a little email tidy up and um, your system will reflect how you live how you work your lifestyle what's going on in your life that kind of thing and um, it could be that when you go on holiday you know when you come back from holiday it's crazy isn't it it's nuts so you're going to set a little alarm a little timer a month after you come back to make sure you sort your holiday photos out be realistic with yourself um so i actually do our um, a yearly photo album like an actual printed print off physical album of our year as a family with photos i've done it since I think my daughter's first one was naught to three months because you take a lot of pictures at the beginning. Um, so I did naught to three months and then something like a three to 18 months one. Um, and then I got it into the, the Christmas one. Um, but I actually run ours December to November. Is it Christmas? I'm too busy to sort blooming photos out. November, great. It's a nice way of looking back on the year. It's when I set my yearly goals for the next year. So part of my system is that once a year I just go and make sure that they're and I see I've maintained it a little bit by my monthly photo sorting but I make sure I've got all my photos I upload them to photo box or whatever app I'm using and I create that that physical book um usually in with a Black Friday discount code so that works quite nicely as well if I'd waited to the end of December loads going on I'm just not it's not going to be a system I'm going to be able to maintain it doesn't serve me I've missed out on the Black Friday discount code. And um, so that's the system that I have in place for that. So particularly for things that are more important to you or are going to save you more time. So having nice family photos together for the year. So my daughter's like, this is the fifth year of my life. Um, and she'll have a little like encyclopedias of her lives throughout the years. That's really important to me. So I want a really strong system to support that. Um, if you don't particularly care about photos, you don't need to invest as much time in having a system for them. It's as simple as that. Um, and then how you choose to, do you need alarms? I have reminders, I have to have reminders on everything. Everyone thinks I'm super organized. I'm just like, no, there's lots of reminders on Alex the robot, speaking robot thing. That I won't say it's proper name, because otherwise it'll talk to us. Um, to my phone alarms, to my Google calendar. It's all, it's all as soon as I've decided on a system, I need to put some, and some of these systems I have been doing for years, I still have alarms and reminders. Never underestimate how long you're going to need a reminder and an alarm <laughs> to keep a system going. But I'm so dang glad I do. Um, so it's making sure they're going to serve their purpose, that they are supported with like, alarms, timers, etc. However, you're going to do this, um, and that you are doing those little bits and regular because, like. Doing the initial categorize and minimize feels like a big task. Luckily with digital, you can chunk it down so easily without having a room full of clothes or a room full of kitchen pots. Um, it's more condensed, you can shut the laptop and deal with it on another day. Um, piece it together bit by bit. But if you've got those systems in place, you know that you're not gonna get into that state again, um, which is wonderful. Um, and quite often when something else new comes in, you're so used to systemizing that you will give it a system pretty much straight away. And um, so, if, for example, um, I had a system with my daughter's information um, with her. She had a I actually have a physical paper folder in the filing cabinet. Um, and then I have my digital system for her photos. Um, so when she started school, uh, preschool and was creating loads of blooming artwork, so many pieces of paper coming home. I put it into the same straight away I systemized it into the same thing that we did with photos so she now in the same folders she has photos and artwork for each of the months and I just take a picture of the, the art and put that into that folder I, I mirrored a system that already existed because pictures of our artwork are nearly as important to me as like pictures of what she's done she loves doing art uh, of physical photos of of her doing things so I mirrored that system and um, so each system that you create will help you create another one in the future and um, it will help you to systemize those more like sorting photos not that exciting 
not that exciting. Being able to go through and look at your photos and remember those things. And I say, never underestimate the power of a photo until it's the only thing you've got left. Um, and by that, I mean, um, when you lose someone that's important to you, the only thing you've got left of them is a photo. And um, suddenly those photos become very, very important. Um, it's actually a photographer, a friend of mine that said that. So I never under underestimate what people say to me or why do photos matter so much to you? It's the same thing I've got left of my mum. And she had some of few things, but you know what I mean? Like she couldn't see her face to face anymore. She just had those pictures. Um, but by having that system in place, I just kind of do it a bit automatically and it's done. And then I can have the joy of being able to go back through and I do something, I'm a sit, sit and I'll just put a little set slideshow to run of her baby pictures and things. And it's lovely, it's lovely. I like having those memories too. Um, and now I have, time to enjoy those memories because I'm not thinking oh god this is hell it's such a mess none of them are grouped together etc etc then we move on to so we've done categorize minimize organize systemize we're moving on to glamorize and you get this less less fun with digital than with physical because with physical you're like it's furniture and decorative boxes and like the acrylic containers and dividers and you can tell I love all that stuff too. Uh, it's so exciting. Um, it's the label maker and like getting scripts or using a cricket. It's all those exciting things. But you can still do a little bit with digital. And um, so you can actually change icons on your folders um, on lots of systems. So it might be that you're going to make it look nice um, by the cat folder, the photo that's folder that's labeled cats. You're going to change that to a picture of a cat. Um, or your garden one is going to be a picture of a garden, or your house one will be a picture of a house. And um, glamorizing could be going through and your key folders, putting them into capital letters. So you've got a couple of folders that really jump out because they're in capitals. Um, it could be just going and putting capital letters at the beginning of each word. I, I really, if it's a title, I want the capitals to be in the right place. Um, I also, for titles, I prefer it to be the and sign, not the word and. So that is ways to glamorize it. Um, now you might be saying, Jess, that's an utter waste of time. Do not underestimate how much better we are at maintaining our systems and maintaining our organization if it looks nice, if it looks pretty. Now, pretty to what, from one person to another is going to look very different. I mean, you look at decor, you've got maximalism and minim minimalism, and they bring calmness, both bring calmness to the right person. Um, so it's what's what's going to work for you um, do you want it very very simple do you prefer it to be more bright and colorful um, do you not care about maybe you like everything to be in low case maybe you like everything to be in capitals maybe just want capital at the beginning maybe you're like Jess I've never even registered that I know for me capital letters not like lack of capital letters drives me nuts um, so for me it's worth me doing that a little bit of time because I know I'm much more likely to keep that folder looking neat and tidy if I've done that um is the spelling correct and um, maybe that's something that's important to you but you struggle with spelling so you're going to go through like looking at that word I know it's wrong um just search it on google find the right spelling and label it correctly um you might be like no never notice never notice no idea don't care that's not going to be an element of glamorized for you then and that's okay um that is a-okay so like I said there's a little bit less to do um, but it uh, can still be a nice to do. And it's one of those things like I, yes, it's nice to sit on the sofa and just watch a movie, but um, I can't focus on the movie if I'm doing this. <laughs> I need something to do at the same time and then I'll actually follow the movie. And um, so that for me is a good time to do a bit of glamorizing. I'm gonna change some folder labels or I'm gonna change some colors of things. Um, I love having a few different colored folders and stuff and all the sections in my google calendar are done different colors actually my daughter worked how to do that before me and she showed me smart little six year old um she's like mommy have you seen that you could do this and i was like i didn't know you could do this so now all my google calendar folders are color coordinated too um so yeah if you, you're like no that won't that won't rock my boat then don't bother it's about what it's not it's about making it look aesthetically pleasing for you or for you and your partner if two of you can use it or you and your co-worker if two of you, more than one of you are going to use it. So that's it. You're now completely organised with your digital stuff. 
everything everything is done and um, one of the ones i will say because email i know is a big problematic one um is that is that unsubscribe 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 amazon you don't need to keep any amazon emails they're all saved in the system so you can always refer back to them um so just go straight in every time you get an amazon email just glance at it and hit delete you just don't you just don't need to keep it um but by going through and searching first searching the word unsubscribe unsubscribing and then searching the name of the actual company um, will be hugely beneficial to help reduce those ones down too um so any questions feel free to either unmute oh, oh that's noisy either unmute or pop it in the comments if you've got any specific questions I'm just going to check there's nothing on this book one so it says it's still live streaming it just wouldn't open it so we'll see if that's still going um how do you recommend getting started email email and that unsubscribe would be my first like favorite one um searching and and searching the word Amazon in your email. Um, very few of us don't use Amazon, but um, or there might be if you get your food delivery from a certain company, like think what's the one that pops up the most? Um, and you can search anything. So if you've got a coworker you haven't worked with for three years, um, then you could search their name and that'll bring up all their past emails and get those out. Um, and also then your email will start working faster, which makes it easier to clear out future ones as well. Um, you might want to look if you've got long lots and lots of years a digital separate hard drive like an external hard drive is a really useful thing and you can get like a terabyte for like 25 30 quid now as well and um, so it could be that you're going to do the equivalent of a packing party so a packing party is quite an extreme decluttering thing where you pack up everything and some people have a few bottles of wine and some friends around to help you pack up your house as if you're moving and um, and then you only unpack the specific item that you need and um, the sort of more extreme version is you spend six months and literally you put sheets over your sofa so until you specifically sit on the sofa or on that chair you wouldn't take the the sheet the packing sheet off it and um, you can do the same thing with a digital hard drive so you can move all your folders say off your worktop um and then you could put that all into your all into your hard drive um and just bring them back onto your computer as you needed to now you might you'd probably keep your digital hard drive out while you were doing a process like that um whereas i keep mine somewhere else um, most of the time because i just i don't need to access it very much i have what i use regularly on here um but you can do that same principle that declutter that um packing party principle but for your digital stuff and um, or if you don't want to get an external hard drive, you can literally just whack it all into a folder called folders, uh, items to store, sort, and then just take them out one at a time as well. Um, so if I have a big backlog of photos, which usually happens on this bad boy. Um, so if I have a lot of backlog photos on this, um, you're very welcome, Callie, see you soon. Um, so if I have a lot of this is the little is the GoPro that little ones allowed to use and um, I will take the memory card out and I will put them all into a folder that I have on my desktop called photos to sort um, and then I know I can go through it at a later time and that is how I initially sorted all my photos is I moved them all into a folder that said photos to sort and, and then I slowly moved them out bit by bit um, into the thing so that can help you break it down um, do you have a maximum amount emails a maximum amount of what for my emails to be now Feel so free. for for yeah absolutely hello jessica hello michelle so when you think about at the end of the week do you keep your do you have a certain number where you say i'm not going to exceed this amount of emails going into the next week no i don't have a number with that um I wouldn't say that that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, and when we talk um, in the same way, we talk about the containerize or number of, so think about your socks. You could say, right. I'm going to 
same number of socks that fit in this box or I'm going to have 20 pairs of socks and that's going to be my maximum. For me, I kind of have a containerize for my emails. I don't want to have to scroll down loads. Ideally, I want my email open and I want to be able to see my first and last email in my inbox within the screen. Okay. I, don't, I have no idea what that number is. If I have to scroll a little bit, I'm not going to be upset. If I can completely empty it, that's definitely my happy place. Um, but I want to, I don't want to have to scroll miles. I want, want to. Right. <laughs> The that's a great gauge because <laughs> I think sometimes I am scrolling miles so I love that <laughs> <laughs> and it's like if you're scrolling miles I scroll to the bottom or like change the sort function so it's putting the oldest ones at the top and then sort from the the top backwards um because quite a lot of those old ones will either be delete or they should be in another folder and if they're going to sit in your inbox for a long time they should right. be a separate folder and that also will help straight away help keep your inbox down They've just moved into like a subcategory. Okay. Um, and that's about also remembering that clutter can be just about where it is, not what it is. So okay. it might be clutter in your inbox, but if it was in a invoices folder in your email, mm. it's not clutter anymore. It's serving a purpose. Right. Um, I love that. It reduces like, it's, it's all about like reducing down the overwhelm and saving us time, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Thank you, Jessica. You're very welcome. Um, don't think we've got any questions over on Facebook. I think it worked and streamed. It might have had a gap in the middle, but I'll find out later um, when I check it. Um, any other final questions? Um, look at us finishing on time. Um, I've got a load of wood to glue to a filing cabinet, so I'm going to go off and do that. Um, we have, where are we? Thursday morning. We've got co-working is tomorrow, not today. Um, so during the next few hotter weeks, I'm going to try and do the co-working sessions in the morning. But because I had this this morning, we can do the co-working now. So we've got co-working from nine till 11 UK time this Friday. Um, so, yeah, come along and enjoy that. Um, and then we have the weekly review live from the retreat this weekend. So um, nine o'clock on Saturday, we'll still be doing weekly review. Um, and planning session but uh we'll be the organized entrepreneur retreat so it's very exciting sadly not on the beach for that bit i'll be in the in the dining room doing that bit but um still still we'll be near the beach taking it <laughs> um have an amazing day thank you so so much for being here and i'll see you soon ta-ta for now if you want to be happy, it's going to have to be a lifestyle switch. And if you want to be happy, you're going to have to do the work indeed. Quick fixes become better diets to take back your time and live your life for you. Because if you want to be happy, it's going to have to be a lifestyle switch.